Hey, uh, this is Rodney Ho with AJC.com. I'm here with Eric Anthony Leung. He is a prop maker and he makes swords, he makes weapons. What are you putting together for a local TV show today? I am putting together a mold for a revolver for a Chiapa. That's a weird looking revolver where the barrel's on the lower, on the lower side. Okay. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a two part mold. For, so the first part of this mold, I'm gonna jump right in it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use water-based clay. Excuse the noise. We've got a lot of other shops around. <laughs> Indeed, that's why I have a mic. <laughs> Hopefully we can localize the sound a little bit here. Yeah. So, so is, is this, this is not a real gun or is this No, real? this one's not real. This one is actually resin, so I'm, I'm making a copy of a copy. Okay. But there's, that's the real gun over there, right? Correct, so, correct. Okay. So, so this, is the, this is the real deal. That's the real deal. Okay. Um, but I am only going to be firing blanks out of the revolver. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about revolvers is that you don't have to modify them too much in order to fire blanks out of them. You don't have to modify them at all to fire gotcha. blanks out of them. But like, for example, my Glocks that I have from, from Glock, they were, they were had to be manufactured by the company in order to fire blanks. Um, because without a, without a lead projectile coming out, the, the, the blank round does not have enough power to cycle the, the semi-automatic action okay. of the, here I'll show you, this is like an example. So the slide wouldn't move back if there was no, if there was no real bullet coming out of it. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to singe the, the barrel, you have to cinch it up um, to so that it creates a little rocket engine so it shoots the barrel and the slide back so you know a lot about guns <laughs> I know a decent amount I'm not I'm not a gun expert per se um, and I, I I know yeah what what, what other uh, what shows and uh, movies have you made guns for in the past any any in particular or that you can set <laughs> um, a lot of music videos mm -hmm. I've rented a lot of guns mm -hmm. I, the, the the biggest the biggest blockbuster movie hasn't come out yet that I've worked oh, okay. on with guns. It's is um, a movie called Mina with Tom Cruise. Wow! I rented some guns that were in a in a uh, a police station, like a background hung on the wall, like an old style police station. But you can see my shotguns in the background. Um, I mean, you got your claim to fame with Revolution on NBC, but those are swords. <laughs> right, right, and that's. I mean that's what my real true passion is is in the is in the bladed weapons that's what got me started um, and you know like I said um, it, it's like a, a boyhood fa uh, uh, passion uh, that that turned into my to turn into my actual career uh, I love I love working with uh, anything to do with entertainment and, and uh, especially with, with Hollywood I just recently friended one of my uh, uh, one of my uh, childhood. Uh, I would say I, I, I really looked up to I really looked up to him because because of, of his ability, his martial arts ability. A guy named Ernie Reyes Jr. Mm -hmm. He was in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and another movie called Red Sonia with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Very cool. <laughs> So this is uh, the most tedious part, and usually the most dis potential destructive part of working with a real firearm is playing up the mold to make it two parts. So what are you doing right now? You are putting the clay in for... I'm creating a seam line, mm -hmm. uh, roughly an irregular seam line, so that I can lock the two parts of the mold together, and it uh, it can be it can stay to, it can stay together and create that seal. And is that kind of what around. this is right here, or what is this one well, right here? Well, what was done with these molds is bumps were put in mm -hmm. intentionally with a, a little divot or a dowel, right? And the one side's done, and then flipped over, clay mm -hmm. removed, 
and then the other side is done the same way with the so 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 when when it um, when it drops in these little bumps mm -hmm. it creates little keyholes for it to not slide around oh okay gotcha makes and sense because if your mold shifts your your piece that you're creating is is could be off yeah it's definitely off and you, the idea is to to prevent as many prevent as much of the seam line as possible oh sure have you uh, who taught you how to do this stuff i'm self-taught wow. I, I didn't um i i didn't really i didn't go to school for any of this aside from um, did somebody jewelry. just did, did somebody help teach you the basics or you yeah saying... I, I get i got my fundamentals my fundamental knowledge from my jewelry my jewelry school that i went to and it, it, it what's interesting about jewelry is it, it, it and you it, still make jewelry? Right? I do, I do. It, it, it closely related to it's closely related to making props as well because you're still using resins, you're still using rubber, you're still using all kinds of um, of material that will that we use uh, for making for making props. I'm going to clean this up a lot when I. When is that Tupac movie? You, you did some jewelry for Tupac. I did. Uh, I did a bunch of film. Them. That's coming out next, soon, right? Yeah. I was contacted by the other Tupac movie. Uh, there's one with Johnny Depp. Oh, there are uh, two of them. My goodness. Yeah. They're well. I, I, guys, the guy inquired because I have the necklace that that he wore while when he was shot. Right. Yeah. You created it. You recreated it. Yeah. And they needed it for the movie. They need it for the movie, but. Uh, I think they're they're still working the logistics. Oh, that's a little weird to use the same prop on two rival movies. <laughs> it would be I, very I very odd. Well, the thing is, I was I was tipped off mm -hmm. to to work on that movie by the same people that worked on our, our local one. And gotcha. the it's not it's not necessarily weird because it's not it's not and nor is it rival. Uh, mm -hmm. it, they still we all support each other in the film industry across the board. Um, I wouldn't say it was, it's a rival film, um, but it's not it's not that common, no, to to have the same props used over and over again. Like, give an example. Mm -hmm. What Josh is working in on over here. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a helmet that originally was uh, used in Snow White and the Huntsman. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so he's and, he's modifying it for a different use. Well, the production brought it over for the, for the. For, for them to modify and change around, right? And it, it's repurposing, it's recycling, but um, props get used over and over well, again. Well, that's good though, because obviously there's a lot of waste in terms of people will build up. I knew like Hunger Games, they built a massive set and sets, and then they just tear them down. Yeah, extreme, and, extreme yeah. amount of waste, and they hire people like me to go in and and save that. Sure. Uh, so you don't want it all end up ending up in a landfill, right? No, not at all, not at all. Um, that's the uh, the most detrimental part of, of the the whole process of filmmaking is that there is significant amount of waste. I mean, the good thing is some props do go into third party circulation, right? They end up on eBay and people collect them and stuff. I mean, that's it's, a good, it's a good and bad thing sometimes. Sometimes, you know, it depends on on the the ability to resell if 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 there is a uh, the. Yeah, how do you legitimize that that's an actual prop from that movie? It has to be movie? granted. It has to be, well, it has to be done by an expert. It has I to be figured. granted by the production. Yes, yeah, so that makes um, sense. You don't want to do... Sometimes they do it for charity, right? Sometimes they'll they sell do. it off they and do. make some money for charities. Well, and even also to offset costs of, of certain things. It, it winds up being, being more costly to store to store props from, uh, from the, uh, the production in all these different cities. Uh, versus just go ahead and start liquidating them. Yeah, like, what did George Lucas do with his original like Star Wars props back in 1977? You know, I think a lot of them, a lot of them remained at ILM for a long time. At his play, the, the the effects studio in in England. Um, there's, I mean, there's books written on on the 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 the, the whereabouts and the the fabrication of, of the props from from his movies. Uh, Peter Jackson, I know, is like. Uh, the Lord of the Rings stuff. All his Lord of the Rings stuff is still in New Zealand, uh, and so there, every there, are very very few props have made it out of the of the the Weta workshop. And does and he have plans for them down the road? Or? I think he I think he does. I think he's a very very smart man. 
I think he uh, it will eventually uh, lead to a uh, an auction of some sort. I hope. I mean, uh, I, I've known a couple of collectors that that uh, have had a couple of things. I actually own a couple of things from Lord of the Rings as well that were, were obtained by like stuntmen and gifted mm -hmm. by by the production. Uh, so I got some Urukai armor at the house. I that's how I got into the, doing this because I got into I got into making the stuff with Tony Swatton, um, but there wasn't anything going on here. So well, tell, tell tell the audience who Tony is. Tony is a is a master bladesmith. Um, uh, based out of L.A. Yeah. He's based in yeah he's based in L.A. based in Burbank, and at the time, he's he was taking on apprentices where they come so about in ten years and, ago or so. Yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and. I slept in the floor of his shop, and uh, he's a good guy. He's uh, uh, he, and and he's con he was constantly doing all kinds of work. Uh, and what was I doing? What was I going to say about, about Tony? Oh, what, which movies has he done? What, uh, what what is his claim to fame? Tony's seems to be his original claim to fame was was the movie Hook um, with Dustin Robin Hoffman Williams? and Robin Williams. Yeah. yeah. He made the hook. Oh, that's that's a big deal. Yeah. So um, he uh, that was his uh, his biggest claim to fame or first claim to fame. But he made all the weapons for Hellboy, for Master and Commander, Last Samurai. Uh, he did all the stuff for Pirates of the Caribbean, um, uh, with the exception of the last couple of movies. Oh, gotcha. But they recycled a lot of his props. Um, you remember the uh, the the Marine Corps commercial where the guy is climbing yes. up the mountain and he turned, does too, grabs yeah. the broadsword? Oh yeah, that's a he famous made, one. He made the broadsword, and actually, it's still in his shop. Well, you also, um, besides make props, you also, I guess, uh, trade in them, right? To basically lease them out and rent them. And correct, and correct. Uh, it's a it's a nice little uh, uh, gig I got going on where I can rent props, like from even from here, from RJ. Um, people can come in and get police belts. They can come in and get badges. This is a badge. Um, gotcha. Uh, this is actually a real badge, but we're planning off the the numbers so that we don't have. We can change out the numbers. Gotcha. Um, and uh, they can get full on police duty belts with with uh, the rigs and everything. Uh, and it it, it, cor it correlates and coincides with my costume rentals. So the, the costume... Yeah, you've pretty much rented out to a lot of TV shows in town, right? I mean, yeah, oh yeah. Um, pretty much any, any and every one that, um, that are going on. And whenever I hear about another show that's going on that, that hasn't, I'm, I always am quick to find out who to, who to call, who to talk to, to get involved, and get involved with them. Yeah, you've, th you've thrown a couple of things the the Walking Dead way, right? And uh, yeah, actually, have you done Vampire Diaries and uh, the originals at all? Or? Vampire Diaries, um, mm -hmm. originals, uh, mm -hmm. a lot more originals than Vampire Diaries, even. Mm -hmm. um, Walking Dead, uh, uh, Ozark, Greenleaf. Oh yeah, that's a new uh, Netflix show, right? Yeah, Stranger Things. Oh, oh Stranger Things, and. Uh, yeah, for people who watch season one, any, anything that you rented out that we, we would actually remember? It would be costume related. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, you don't know which ones they exactly used? No, yeah. Can't remember. Yeah, it's too many costumes. Well, and, and that's why I leave it into the hands of the experts that deal with costumes. Mm -hmm. um, I am not a costume expert by any means. You just kind of you just kind of buy them and, and have, have that other place inventory, correct, right? Correct, correct. I get... I, I get I get it in the right hands so that the, the experts can handle can handle the the rentals um, and do the sizing because mm -hmm. I can't. Looks be like you're almost done here. At least almost. Uh, yeah. Looks a little dirty, but it's a quick and easy mold. Mm -hmm. So you can make how many? You can make as many of these as you want. Is that basically how it works? Yep. Once you have a mold, you can make ten of these if you needed to. Or yep. How many? How many does this particular show need? I need two or three. I need, or? No, I need about a. Dozen. A dozen. Wow. But um, I'm not going to sit here and make a dozen of them, though. Sure, of course. <laughs> this is just to get the primary one done, and then I need to I need to to rig my uh, my uh, my rounds 
-hmm. And 